On a distant planet lives a great wizard named Larry Goat. He is the keeper of Golden Key Comics and the publishing rights to nearly 40 issues of Yogi Bear Comics. For that reason and that reason alone, Larry Goat is hunted by Molotox, a moderately unsuccessful rapper turned comedy podcaster who needs the wizard to fork over the negatives to each comic so he can release the issues for all to see in pristine 2K resolution. He cannot afford the other 2K. But Larry Goat called the fuzz, and now four teens and an 11-year-old future fuckboy are now after me. I mean, Molly Talks for what they are calling threats and intimidation. Now, my, his only option is to manually activate a volcano, I guess. Guys, I have no clue what I'm doing. I am floundering over here. Oh, uh, and I'm Nicole. And this is Kaiju Icon 2023 presented to you by Mostly Speaking Sentai. <laughs> yes, guys, have you ever exhaled and gone like, hey, guys, hey, I'm James. And it kind of sounds like there's two voices happening at the same time in slightly different registers. You go, hey, my name is James. There's that really high one and then that low one. Hey, my name is James. How much cocaine are you on right now? <laughs> <coughs> to the sky, Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> That's not cocaine related. It's just my nose hair itched. Uh, and speaking of people who uh, scratch my itches, it's the bricks, the emissary of hell, Nicole Jakis. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm Conan O'Brien. I'm fine. That's cool. I, what 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 are you up to today? Just working and doing this. And okay. I took a nap. All right. And how, I ate some chips. How long was that nap? Uh, maybe an hour. Oh, dang. I thought it was only like 20 minutes. <laughs> it was a very short nap while I was editing. We just watched the next movie we'll be discussing. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I was too hot last night. So okay. I couldn't really sleep very well. Girl, you're too hot every day. Thank you. Because you're blazing, lady. And brazen, scabies. You walk up to a scabie and you just say, get the fuck out of here, you should. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's a brazen, ma'am, to those yeah, scabies. Yeah, yeah. They may be parasites, but they they still should be respected. They have feelings. Uh-huh. Oh, man. I want scabies to burrow in me. I will be Ew. your shelter, your king. Ah, what if that's the demo I need that? You know, parasites, scabies, etc. What? That could be like all of a sudden they have credit cards because like a credit card bank will give anyone money. And okay. then I'm just getting tons of patrons because scabies are living inside of me. And they're like, we got to pay you back. We have these <laughs> these fraudulent cards. Cards. They're, yeah, they're like, we got to make sure he stays alive so we can keep living. Mm -hmm. Or just out of respect. I respect them. They respect me. And the way, best way to respect me is with that, that cold, hard credit card. Yeah. Already off to a nice start tonight, baby. I'm scared. Well, you shouldn't be. You're on scare tactics. This I say entire that at work relationship. All the time. What? You're on scare tactics? Like, someone will apologize for something. I'll be like, because they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. It'll be like, you shouldn't be. You're on apology tactics. Hell yeah. And they're like, what the fuck are you saying? One of my friends was on scare tactics. Congrats. You know him. Yeah, personally. I, oh, yeah. No, I mean, not per you, you are aware of him. Mm hmm. He scared people. He wasn't being scared. Yeah. He was doing the scaring. Yeah, HMK. Yeah, Howard Michael Kremer. He changed up his name. He wants to be called Kremer now. Kremer. Uh -huh. I mean, you can do that. Yeah. It's weird how, I don't know, never mind, it's stupid. For now on, emphasize the Mick, and instead of Cullum, say Cummin. So Mick Cummin. Yeah. 
Sometimes I'm like, you like make fun of like, haha, this person said my name wrong or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, the only reason why it's wrong is because you've said it's wrong. You know what yeah. I mean? If someone wants to call it Jackus, yeah. who cares? If I just say, hey, that's how you pronounce it, they'll believe me. They won't even know. There are some families, and we will introduce our guest after I say this. There are some families that they're battling of, no, we we say our last name like this, and they're like, no, we say it like this. Yeah, and it's like it doesn't fucking matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a split amongst the family tree. And speaking, I mean, unless what? it's like being done out of disrespect, then it does matter, but... Mm -hmm. Well, someone who never disrespects us or anyone around him. You know him from Tokyo Lives. It's Roberto. Hello. It's it's me, Rob or Roberto. You can do either one is fine. Oh, <laughs> as long as you don't call him late for dinner. God damn Whoa. it. Two yeah. days in a row. <laughs> never. I would never be late for dinner. That's disrespectful. Yeah. And you don't disrespect. They call me uh, Dr. Respectful. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of my bit. That's why I've grown the mustache and the mullet, but it's natural. It's not fake. Mm -hmm. You know? Wait, should we be thinking they're not natural? Uh, well, I think isn't. Uh, I thought Dr. <laughs> Disrespects had like a like a wig on. I thought that was. Is it a fake mullet or is it a real mullet? I don't actually watch any of his stuff, so I don't know. Oh, I didn't know that was a person. Yeah, I don't. I oh, did all not I either. know is he gets, he's like an angry gamer. I think oh. that's his bit. So uh, he ben shows done. up in like YouTube people talking about like, oh, a streamer said swear words online or whatever. Oh, man. So. An angry gamer. Uh, already seen that when I was 11 playing Final Fantasy IX. Uh, I didn't get mad at nine, but I did. Uh, I didn't know that you were supposed to junction because I, I skipped through the tutorial as fast as possible on eight. So I got like to a point where it was impossible to keep playing. Uh -huh. Turns out you're just supposed to do that. That's yeah. like the main mechanic of the game. It's and so uh, fun. Now it's like a challenge run to not do that yeah you're not supposed to level up and you're just supposed to <laughs> grind to get card mod and once you get card mod you start refining things because See, you got yes. ref all these refined items to into magic and then you can be on disc once the same island and oh bada bing bada boom you're as strong as a base level 100 this might be the <laughs> second episode in a row we've Two talked days in about a row this as well <laughs> I love Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, that game sounds yeah. awful. No, Nicole, it's so good. And you want to know the best part about it? No, I don't. Does so he have the strategy guide right there? Because I might no. have my Prima strategy guide somewhere. Oh, it's even better. Yeah. It's a uh, something. It's the final boss. Ultimicia? Isn't that Ultimicia? Am I wrong? No, you also probably did not get these summons because that's oh. Siren, which you have to draw from a specific okay. boss. That would, yep, okay. That's That would explain why I don't know it. <laughs> Man, Final Fantasy VIII, I wish Lil' Cory would get his ass off the couch and just, he could pl be playing the computer on the couch because we were streaming that and I loved it except the time he skipped through a huge part and he's like, hey w w how'd we get here? I was like, you skipped over all the story. That's that's how we got here. Oh you were just man, spamming. he's one of those people. Just, like, just blast that, like, this is taking too long. They're talking. I want to well, get back to the romance. Give me the, give me the cute boy girl stuff. Come on. No, he was, okay, so clearly you didn't play enough of this game because the thing you want to get back to in Final Fantasy VIII is Triple Triad. Oh, uh, well, okay. But I was also bad at that because I wasn't I wasn't drawing anything. So I didn't, you know, I didn't have good cards. I didn't mm -hmm. play the card game. I didn't draw magic because anything that was ancillary to the the cute, like, shoujo anime plot was like, I get get this out of my way. <laughs> I gotta get. To, I gotta get to this cute love story. No, you. It's get out of here. The entire game is amazing. I know the music, the story, the true, gameplay, true. the card battles. Fair. That's I did watch someone do an entire let's play just to try and like get as much triple triad in as possible. Man, it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> go around also like trying to manipulate the card rules so it's always like when you win you tr you take all their cards opposed to just picking a single <laughs> one <laughs> it's fun guys Excellent. nicole what, mm -hmm. what's your favorite video game that you would grind for hours on 
Harvest Moon. All right. What was the the grinding equivalent like? Oh, if you do this one thing, you're set for the entire game. Oh, actually, no. The if you're talking about like grinding, it was Animal Crossing on the DS, mm-hmm. where you would get like a a quote unquote like tropical fruit that's not native to your island. And you would just grow a bunch of those trees everywhere. And then I think it's like they regrow every three days or something. Mm -hmm. And you just collect all of those and you sell them and you get a fuck ton of money. (laughs) And so I would just do that over and over again. Would you manipulate the the date? Skip the time for it on the DS? Uh, Probably. Oh, dang. You sneaky. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I was super guilty of that. Oh, man. I never played any games with an internal clock, so I just, I have no idea that, that bliss. No, but there is a cheat on, like, another Wonderful Life, I think, of Harvest Moon, where it just, like, maxes out everything, and so playing that way was cool, because it's like, you can unlock shit that you weren't able to unlock before. It's also going to max out hearts on all the women. I don't remember. I hope so, because then you have the pick of the litter, and they're all coming at you saying, oh, pick me. Here's a cow. And the other one's like, here's the entire village. What? And then you're like, wait, you bought the entire town? And she goes, yeah, my daddy did. Everyone else evicted. And you're like, please don't (laughs) do this. I'll marry you if you don't. And everyone's like, yes, please marry her and make her not do this. She just wants to live like common people, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like common people owning an entire town to herself. (laughs) Importing all the goods because there aren't any goods being created there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that shit. Uh, James Big on... Generational wealth. Okay, yeah. I love it, guys. No, I'm big at... old money, you know? Oh, screw this new money. They don't know how to spend it properly. They're just blowing it all. No, you need to keep it in the bank. So even on interest, you're making more than the poverty line per year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's mostly it's all like in stocks. You have very little like liquid cash. It's all like in offshore accounts. (laughs) It's all like, you know, in stocks and bonds. You own huge chunks of companies that like mine people's like whole spirit, like physically suck the soul out of people. Uh, But it makes you like a fraction of a millionaire more. Uh, a year so there's that you know you're talking that teen money not that baby money or that old money (laughs) that's what the teen money does i'm talking about (laughs) old money we have money left over from when there was no income tax (laughs) in cryptic cellars uh, locked underneath uh, Uh like five keys that are scattered around the mansion Yeah. yeah Old money. The old, oldest. Old money. Yeah. You have that Scooby-Doo money. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> when I die, someone will turn into a ghost and yeah. try to scare everyone away to find my money. That's exactly. the kind of old shit I need. Oh, my gosh. Not this Bitcoin billionaires. Get out of here. Watching Twitter die the last two days has been very funny. Insane. I can only look at 600 posts a day, which is great for me because like I've been getting stuff done the last two days. What about you guys? (laughs) I don't look at Twitter. I just post. Wow. I just I wake up. I doom scroll for approximately two hours and five minutes. And then I've hit my my 600 cap. And then I throw my phone uh, halfway across the, the house. And then I just go outside and I stand in the approximately 115 degree weather down here for mm-hmm. eight hours straight. I melt. Uh, yeah. And then I just go back inside and uh, slowly reconstitute myself. That's, yeah. that's how I've been living the last few days, you know? That sounds um, wonderful. Oh, it's it's so good. I love it. I love that I can only walk my dogs at like six in the morning or like eight at night. That's really fun because, uh, you know, I've got the the old man that doesn't like walking when it's dark, oh, but he also man. doesn't want to go outside when it's hot. <laughs> See, I've been melting, but for a different reason. It's because I'm taking all those Vimmelville dietary supplements. Ooh, that'll do you. Uh-huh. And I've been eating a lot of the stuff. That's been making me melt as well. That, that'll that do it to you, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. And whatever that thing is on that, uh, like, street trash movie. Oh, yeah, the drink. I can't remember the name of that. Oh, my gosh. 
I referenced that not too long ago, and now it's it's just gone like dust in the wind. Dust in the quim. Oh, uh, is it dusty quim? It's not good, guys. <laughs> you know. have something medically wrong. <laughs> well, you guys want to talk about Power Rangers, a turbo movie? Uh, we don't have to, do we? Oh, it's <laughs> it's Power Rangers. I thought it was that movie about snails that go fast. Oh, no, we could watched, talk about that instead. You watched the wrong one. Yeah, man. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Steve, are you getting that message for because you keep trying to message, or is that the stream? I think he's doing a bit. Oh, okay. All right. Who? Steve, if you're doing a bit, please let us know. You cannot do that. <laughs> it scares me because I think something's wrong. We just see a rate limit. Ex- oh, because of uh, That's Twitter. That's what Twitter says when okay. you scan too many things. That's why I was like, oh, it's a bit. All right. <laughs> what the fuck is it? What is the twit? What's happening? So oh, he's yeah. You go. You know. So if you scroll on Twitter too much, okay. Uh, you if you just a person who's had a Twitter account for a while, sure. See six hundred posts. If you try and refresh, uh, it crashes and it won't let you see any more. Like you can't see any more like tweets and for that's, the day. Okay, and that's not on purpose. That I would is hope not. kind of an accident because essentially Elon Musk just is trying not to pay for like. The ability to refresh itself. And then also there's some weirdness where like they're essentially like doing a denial of service attack on themselves. Like Twitter is like constantly trying to scan itself and that's like freezing itself. It's something weird has happened. I don't know the ins and outs of it in like a lot of detail, but essentially, yeah, you you can only see so many tweets in a day because uh, they're trying to get out of paying their rent. (laughs) Yeah, I bet all the people that he fired are like, ha fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I can only hope that they're all doing great, you know? <laughs> yeah. I like how he's running the business. <laughs> oh he's tra- he's making sure profits before anything else, and that's how business should be ran. Well, I mean, yes. Yeah. Profits it- in what regard? Because, uh, you know, like you also have to think about like from an advertiser's perspective, like, you mean only 600 people can buy or only 600 like views can happen. So the chances are if there's 1 billion people using Twitter and making posts about their dog farting or something, whatever. Ooh. the chances of you, a business person posting your one shop at Albertsons, it'll stop your dog from farting mm-hmm. uh, like ad. That's definitely going to get just totally consumed by just the general noise of Twitter. So, well, that's why you paid for sponsored ads. <laughs> true, true. But even then, it's not like just 600 sponsored ads, which would be very funny. Oh, yeah. You have to get through <laughs> 600 sponsored ads before you can just see like normal Twitter. That would be, that's the, that's the revolution that he should aim for. And you also have out of the 600, you have to click on at least five. <laughs> no. Yes. You have to click into and actually like engage with uh-huh. before you can see any other tweets. That's you have to the like s- scroll to the bottom of that page to make sure oh, and then click see. like a button, say like, oh, I accept that I've read this page. See all the like back and forth conversations that have happened underneath it. You have to engage with it and like write your own message. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like <laughs> you're incentivized to get in there early and fast because like, you know, the more people that engage, the longer you have to scroll down mm-hmm. to get to the yes, I did. I did engage with this. Oh, no, I meant like you click on like their website link and oh, that's where it goes to, to. It's it's you're looking for translation too. OK, yeah. I see. And you have to retweet the post. Oh, yes. You have to make 600 sponsored retweets a day before. Okay. Yep. We're adding to this. This is this is the this is the dream. This is the the future cap. This is the innovation capitalism has promised us. Mm-hmm. Hey, speaking of promising capitalism, shouldn't we talk about Turbo, which we promised we would talk about? Yeah, and this... I didn't I didn't transition very well. Hold on. That didn't Yeah, that didn't the work. snail movie. Let's go. Yeah, let's go, baby. Isn't Ben Schwartz in that? Oh. He's in everything. I've There's never no seen not. it. Isn't no, that's Bolt that Miley Cyrus is in. She's she plays this raspy voice of a dog. She says, Hey guys, I can buy flowers for myself and I live the best of both worlds. A dog that smokes. Yeah. God, that's would be so cool. <laughs> dog just lighting up for dogs himself. Uh no, it's it's Ryan Reynolds and Paul Giamatti and Snoop Dogg and Samuel Jackson. In Turbo? In Turbo. Hold on. Did you search Ben Schwartz Turbo? 
Uh, no, but I did just type in Turbo Movie, and so I, I looked at like five seconds of it. Ben Schwartz was in Turbo. He was? Oh, you're yeah. right. Yeah, he sure was. I think you're getting it confused with Sonic. No. He was a guy named Skidmark fast. and uh, Whiplash. There we go. We we did it, guys. All so, right. So we're we talking about Sonic now? Are we talking about the Sonic movies? No, guys. Let's, for <laughs> real, let's talk about Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Oh, gosh. That's right. So you're Saban Entertainment, and you're you're getting ready. You've bought, like, a new ranger show right and you're like okay we've got to hype this up we've got to like build up our new rangers multiverse right yeah. like we're done with geometric shapes we're on to cars you Ooh. know and it makes sense you know you're a teenager with attitude and just like all middle middle upper class you know teens you're gonna get a, you're gonna get your dad's hand-me-down car at some point you gotta go fast so uh so this is not what Sonic. do you do <laughs> you make a story where they find the worst most horrifying wizard yeah ever hate it that has never been talked about at any point in any other series there's just like an alien race of wizards they're little guys they're like like terrible ewoks and they communicate exclusively by gurgles yeah and you have like a whole story about that that's your that's your go that's uh and also the cars don't really show up that much and <laughs> even though you've bought all the like cool suits from the show to have as diva toxes like minions yeah. you hand make the worst lava monster suit in human history and whoa, that's your kickoff rob whoa that's right i'm gonna i'm gonna go that far that suit was cool <laughs> yeah that one was really cool you liked malagor yeah, yeah malagor is just dude. a lumpy rock boy and like all of diva toxes minions look so rad nah <laughs> They're like proper like Sentai monsters yeah. like from Japan. And then like Saban clearly just made Malagor and he looks so cheap by comparison. No, see, my biggest issue with this movie is that it is yeah. such a bastardization of Car Ranger because they're trying yes. to make another fantasy movie. Yes. In string. It's the same exact movie, pretty much, where, oh, my God, this, like, monster of the week shows up out of, like, some wormhole or an actual yeah. hole. And then they need to go to another place to unlock a power. And it's on this island. And then that's where the battle goes down. And it's just real rehashing. But in the. The worst way possible. The only good parts of this movie are when Diva Tox is on screen. Diva Tox is great. She's amazing. She's a great, like, she rises to the throne of of uh, Rita perfectly. Mm -hmm. I think she's a fantastic villain. I don't know anything about, like, the actual Turbo TV show. I never watched that. But I do know Car Ranger, which felt like it was, like, more of a goofy like, it felt more funny. Like, it was almost like a parody of Sentai shows of the, like, before them. Yeah. And it felt, like, very fun and energetic. And admittedly, like, I love the more, like, wacky ones, like Kaku Ranger. So, like, obviously Car Ranger was going to fit with me. Mm -hmm. This, they're yeah, they're trying to make it serious. And so, like, you know, you start off with, like, for some reason, their morphing stuff doesn't work. I don't know if they actually define that in the movie, if there's, like, a specific reason why they can't morph anymore. But they can't. So you only see like the pink ranger transform in a terrible CGI suit for like a split second, like super quick. And then she's like, oh, I need new powers. And then the introduction. So in the old movie, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first movie, uh, the Power Rangers lose their power because Zordon gets his whole butt pushed in, mm -hmm. like his whole legs and arms and butt pushed into a giant ball sack, which we all remember. He's just like a weird, gross uh -huh. little guy with a head. And he's like, you know. Uh -huh. So that's no good. He's messed up. So they have to go to another planet where they can unlock a new mystical power so they can come back and save the day. That's the premise. In this one, the premise is there's a magical wizard. There's a evil gal who is the new Rita, and she wants to do the exact same plot line as Lord Zed getting married to Rita, except so she's going to make a new lava monster her husband. Mm -hmm. And so she needs an evil wizard but she also needs human sacrifices and then she needs to corrupt those human sacrifices and bring them to an island <laughs> along with the wizard to sacrifice both, which will make the lava monster fall in love with her and marry her. 
which will help her rule the world somehow. Yeah, obviously. She needed the wizard because he can unlock the barrier of the Bermuda Triangle or whatever the hell it was called. The Devil's Triangle? Was that what it was? I think it was called the Geometric Triangle. (laughs) But yes, let's get into like note by note of this movie. But first, did you see this in theater? What's your experience with it? So I saw the original movie in theaters and then I didn't watch this movie until before the like reboot Power Rangers movie came out. Mm -hmm. And then I pitched to the Tokyo Lives gang like, hey, wouldn't it be really funny if we did a retrospective where we watch both movies back to back? So we watched the first one, which I rented on VHS. We watched it all together in my like apartment and then we sat down and we recorded an episode and then we said, okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to watch the next one. And the crash of energy levels <laughs> from the first one <laughs> to the second half of the recording is so stark. It is perfect. It, it perfectly <laughs> captures the vibe of watching one right after the other. Cause that was the first time I had ever watched it. And like, they were like, it's bad. You're not going to enjoy it. And I was like, I like bad movies. This will be fun. Mm -hmm. And I was wrong. So, yeah, like my first experience was sitting in my like apartment with two of my friends drinking uh, after getting horse recording one episode and Mm -hmm. getting ready and writing notes for a second episode. (laughs) Nicole, your experience? I actually have kind of a story. Uh, So there was a the most recent like Power Rangers comic book issue that came out had the lava guy on the cover (laughs) and a subscriber came in and was buying it and I was like oh hey I just watched that movie and he was like yeah I watched that when I was like 10 years old and like went in like saw it in theaters and was like super fucking pumped and I was like well what did like what did you think and he was like oh I fucking loved it (laughs) so yeah Uh. So that's my story. (laughs) I have to assume if you were like really into Power Rangers at the time, because like a lot of these characters are new to me, except for, you know, I know Vash the Stampede is here and Tommy's here. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone else. So that's I'm a huge disadvantage already. So like there wasn't this like sense of adventure and this grand like, oh, here's the next step. It just kind of like feels like a throwaway Where it's just like, uh, none of these characters really matter. And like the powers don't really matter for like the adventure. Oh, yeah. It's just kind of like here. But if you're into it. He said that it was because uh, I think what Tommy came back or something. Like something about the last one? Tommy and Kimberly. I thought he was in the the show that preceded this. I actually don't know. Uh, Yeah, I think he was. He was like the gold or whatever ranger in Zeo. I don't know. Someone came back. (laughs) Isn't the Gold Ranger Jason and oh. then like Tommy's the Red Ranger? In maybe CEO? chat maybe will I'm let crazy. us know. I'm sure someone has it like all locked in. But, but yeah, <laughs> my experience with this was I think I must have either seen it on rental or if they played it on Fox Kids. And I remember enjoying it like you when you messaged me. The only parts I remember were the ship. So it, in what you said, it's weird that. The powers they are given, these cars, make no sense when you are (laughs) traveling via boat to an island. Yeah. It seems like someone already had this script. And maybe they wanted to do this for a like the previous uh, for like O Ranger Zords and whatnot. That would have made a little more sense. But then they're like, oh, wait, we couldn't get that done in time. Let's, I guess, use Turbo. This is our big new thing. Or they thought, wow, Turbo is going to turn a lot of people off. Let's do a movie to recuperate as much money as we can, and then we'll be fine going into this series. I don't know, but it's like you have cars that will sell toys. You don't need to worry about anything else. You know, I mean, it's impossible to tell exactly what was happening behind the scenes because I don't know there's ever like really like crystal clear documentation on every step of the Power Rangers. It's really like whatever was like super popular gets some background Mm -hmm. story. But I think a lot of people in my age range kind of like, I mean, Zio was the 19th season. Like, I don't. That's wild to me. Wait, uh, Zio would be the 19th on, oh, Sentai? Wait, sorry. No, that can't be right. 19th of the Sentai Rangers. Okay, it's yes, not, there we go. Okay, that's O-Ranger. 
So then wait, yeah, but this is still like way outside when I was watching. So let's see, it started airing in 96. I mean, I guess I wasn't watching it still at that point. I was. Uh, yeah, I remember the first two seasons. I remember like the White Ranger arc and then like it's all blur. It's all a vague mystery. <laughs> you said, I'm going to watch this Shines Man. See, that was where I, yeah, I pivoted to just watching uh, the Shinesman VHS over and over again. <laughs> mm-hmm. You said, give me that yum yum. <laughs> All right, let's get into note by note and figure out what really Turbo is all about. Sure. All right, first we get Larry Go. We're told about him. He truly is a disgusting creature. Awful. (laughs) He's like an Ewok mixed with a Furby. Yes. Oh, I don't like (laughs) either of those things. And like some dark crystal character yeah a little bit but like cheaply made of all of those i don't think it's cheaply made it's just when you combine those three things together they're never going to look good ah yeah that's fair i just mean in the sense that like it's saban entertainment doing it which means like they are they are looking at that budget they're like Mm -hmm. what can we cut to make this happen So the animatronics of his eyeballs don't work super well. And sometimes like one eyelid is slightly down. So every time you freeze the movie, he's got drunk face. (laughs) It's perfect. In the crawl, it was like, oh, he needs to go to Earth to find some powerful friends in Washington, D.C. That is. (laughs) Or in the mafia. I guess it could be one or two. Yeah, he could. It would be a much different story if he went and like just befriended the mob. I'd love it. Soprano showing up, being like, all right, Diva Talks, away. They're like, oh, you're already in a (laughs) boat. Get out of here. (laughs) You're already in a boat. I'm going to just put some cement on there right now. And Diva Talks is like, oh, you really think that's going to work? Yep. Uh, Oh, uh, no, it won't. And she's just like blabbering on. And then they're like, all right, we're going to push you. And then she's like, no, wait, someone help. And then death. Just like normal real criminals versus like uh, spectacular, like mm-hmm. magical criminals is such a good bit, you know? <laughs> they just pull out a gun shooter in the shin and they're like, I oh, can't do anything to us. That's oh not a. Oh my God. That's not a corporal punishment federal crime. That's just, <laughs> I know the law. <laughs> but yeah, he's awful. He has a, a wife and kid, which are also awful, like puppets. <sighs> they don't come in until later, but they're important to the mm-hmm. plot. So I figured I'd mention them here. I wonder, like my sexual awakening with Greta, the female gremlin, did anyone have a sexual awakening no, absolutely to not. The, the lady whatever wizard in Turbo? Because her, like they have her chest out at one point. Uh-huh, just like she's like got the torture thing strapped on her head. Yes, I'm willing to bet that there's someone who saw that and was like, uh-oh. Something's been awakened in me. Oh, give me the mommy milkers. I'm sure it's not a lot of people, but like the problem is if you ask the question, did this sexually awaken something in someone? The answer is 100% always without a doubt. Yeah. Hell yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. It's done something for someone out there. And that's. If there's been enough (sighs) eyes on it, it has. And yes. It would have been funny if, like, the baby was crying and Diva Talk says, Oh, you're not, your tits dry. It's gone sour. And she yanks the baby and says, Take a suck of these. And then the baby's like, I'm strong now. Diva Tox is my mom. I mommy. feel like you're talking about something that you're that you're awakening to here is what we're getting at. Is what we're 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 picking away at here. Guys, Diva Tox, oh baby, oh baby, in this movie, insane that. This was made for children. She has great, huge tracts of land. I don't know what tracts of land means. Oh, is that a, it's a, that's a Monty Python joke. Uh, oh. Disregard. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I had friends. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I had friends too. They were just raised by a British dad. So I, I was inevitably conscripted into watching a lot of BBC comedy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, later on, like Mighty Boosh era, that's my kind of stuff. Fair enough. Yeah, get out of here, Monty Python. Maybe hire some women. They did. They did. But only turn around topless in the background of scenes. So, uh-huh. I mean, not really not really the progression that we were hoping for. No. Nope. You know? yeah, what I would have loved is to see them put on some fake titties and run around naked, flopping their deedle around. Yeah, because Mighty Boosh had so many women in it as well. They had more women than 
uh, Monty Python. <laughs> okay. I feel like just volume wise, Monty Python accidentally had more women, but not yes. like purposefully. No, it, it, literally there's one scene that has technically more women than Mighty Boosh ever had, but also more episodes yeah. than Mighty Boosh ever had just yes. because they were chasing after a man topless. <laughs> it was a huge group of women. That happened, yeah. right? I'm pretty in sure meaning of least, life, at I least think? one bit that's mostly that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's the <laughs> meaning of life, having women topless chasing after you on a British hey, street. Don't you know it? <laughs> but also, the Mighty Boosh only hired people in their family, so it was really dependent on who they could find. It's a really very tight set, you know? Mm-hmm. Very low they were, budget. They were COVID producing before COVID happened, oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> Uh, they were really working within their bubble. Hey, speaking of bubbles, Diva Talks? What about her? I don't know. She's a, she's like the new Rita Repulsa. I think I love her outfit. I love like her vibes. And frankly, I like her whole crew of like misfit, like random tokusatsu villains. Mm-hmm. I think that she has the coolest entourage, especially compared just like with how elaborate they are. There's like the sphere skull man. Oh, yeah. There's like the big elongated uh uh buff elf guy there's so many like fun monsters just like hanging out with her that it makes Rita Repulsa's like pig man guy with glasses and Goldar look like super mid that's like <laughs> and that's that's saying that's a high bar of minions that she's got yeah you mm-hmm. know that because they're the Bozak and the Bozak were technically biker gangs intergalactic style but they were all like bumbling fools who couldn't actually get anything done. Very true. Excellent. Which is my favorite type of villain. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The dumber, the better, you know? That's why I love cops so much. Oh, hey. I what? guess we're going to talk about Bulk and Skull then. Who they cops as well. Yeah, Bulk and Skull. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's let's make sure we're getting things. Uh, Dapu. Oh, is, in order? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Dapu is the rock Dwayne Johnson compared to Larry Goat. True. Fair. What is this? Um, oh, yeah. So when they're fighting, we see, oh, we got, it's insane that it took, I feel like, midway through the movie to find out that they're doing and trying to win this karate competition to save a, sh- a children's orphanage. shelter. This yeah. is insane that they are doing this storyline. <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, cause like, first off they're like, cause in one of the Japanese shows, there's like a kid that can transform into an adult sized. Yes. Sentai in, ranger. In I think ranger. White ranger, right? Yes. Yeah. So they want, they were like, we like that concept. We should have that. Cause a lot of our audience is, very young so instead of just having these 30 year olds running around to uh, pretend to be teens we should have like one actual teen pretending to be an 11 year old so they they get this kid and they're like what do we how do we get him in the suit what do we do and so what they do is they have this karate tournament in which the blue ranger at the time is like let me show you some sick moves yes does a cool kick it's specifically, he says, someone says, Rocky, spinning heel kick my hand. <laughs> just whiffs it. It's not a spinning heel kick at all. He just runs and jumps, ah, flies right over the ropes, which is mm-hmm. sick, falls and immediately shatters his spine in eight places. Clearly never watched any Lucha Libre. Ooh, yeah, that was very true. Or Lucha Underground. Hey, listen to Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling. We're going through every episode. Hey, hell yeah. So Blue Ranger is out. And now we we also, buy, uh, like, the Rangers are also mostly powered down anyway. But yeah, like, uh, they were doing the martial arts tournament to save the local orphanage. Shucks golly. Well, <laughs> it's a shame that now that Rocky is out, they won't be able to do the martial arts tournament anymore. Ah, oh, gosh. Well. Yeah. And we're also, we have never seen this child before. This is all set up for this movie. And when yes. they're on this bus bringing the children to see this competition. Also, is this just in one fucking day, this entire movie? It sure seems like it's supposed to be like a pretty rapid turnaround time. At most two days, because it looks like it might be nighttime when they okay. get their cars. Yeah. And they're driving to the ghost ship. Which, by it's, the way, you've got a car-themed movie. 
with car themed superheroes. And you're like, okay, now we need to go do the cool transportation scene where our heroes go from point A to point B. And their whole thought process is ghost ship. They're, they had to have had this ghost ship set for some oh, other yeah. reason. We don't Absolutely. know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is set up and they're on this bus and the uh, all these kids keep seeing row 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 your boat Jen oh maybe that was to set up them on the ship who oh, knows yes. because they should have been singing the wheels on the bus but everyone's singing and they come up to the, this kid Justin I think his name is and they're like hey Justin why aren't you singing and he's like I don't know man I just really miss my mom and my dad I think my mom's dead but my dad left maybe because he was so sad about my mom dying it's not 100% clear maybe we'll clarify it in the series or maybe we'll never speak of it again <laughs> because you guys are my family now hey I family have, kiss I don't they and like Justin stop <laughs> I have good news for you. I'm pretty sure the kid is not at all. Oh, wait, no, he's in it. Never mind. He's what? in it. <laughs> the kid is the Blue Ranger. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. What? I thought that Rocky was out, like, comes back at some point, but no, the kid's just there yeah. for the rest of the show. He's just I, there for Turbo. <laughs> I believe the actor might have wanted money at all like just say like hey can, can i get Please a little more money cash. and they're like oh you want to know what we'll give you money to show up for like two days but we're gonna just like kick you over the top ropes <laughs> and you I, I hope we'll like put in quotes safety features but we kind of hope you just break your spine <laughs> oh my gosh yeah okay so he is yeah he justin stewart does stick around into the actual show okay good i was like does he actually, do they maintain this plot point into the next one? And yes, except they don't even mention Rocky. I guess they're just done with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Excellent. at this point, we see Larry Goat drop down from space and there's this huge explosion. And then when we see Larry Goat, he's in a tree in a bird's nest and the birds are alive. There was a yeah. visual or a visible, no, you want to know, a visual explosion from miles away. And we... <laughs> are made to believe that the tree is fine, these birds are fine, and Larry Goat is fine. Yeah. What kind of magic is this? That you're He's just shoot? Wouldn't it just be like, hey, I cast a spell. Oh, whoops, I might have made a mistake and I've landed in the atmosphere, but not on the <laughs> ground. It, like, it should teleport you to the <laughs> ground of this place. He's a very bad wizard. That's the the thing. He's not very good at, at like figuring out spatial distances. You know, he's got very because one eye is constantly a little bit closed. Mm -hmm, he's very mm -hmm. bad with like distance, you know, OK, Death perception, not his skill. It would be cool if Terminator all of a sudden like there was a Terminator movie and just like a naked man flops on the ground from super <laughs> high up. And they're like, what's wrong? Why isn't he bleeding? And then they look, oh, my God, he's made a metal he's a robot. Yep. <laughs> Because he, <laughs> they got the coordinates They're wrong. Just, it's slightly off, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, like planets moving. You know, that's a moving target. You know, you can't just like warp back to yesterday because you're going to appear either halfway submerged into the Earth or out in outer space. <laughs> it's no good. Yeah. You know, what would you rather have? Drop from a far, far height or like be in the ground? I feel like if you just uh, suddenly you're uh, molecularly just fused with the ground would be way worse because you might live for a while, you know? Yeah. I, I don't think molecular. You're like, saying you could dig yourself out. You could dig oh, yourself like out. like you just appear in mm -hmm. the ground and the ground moves away from you. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess in that case, there's a good chance you would live. So but what if you're like 10 feet underground? You're oh, buried alive? Yeah. No, I feel like I feel like then the fall, the fall is is at least, you know, at least it's it's one and done, baby. With Jillian you gotta Anderson. You got to worry about it on the way down. I feel like suffocation is worse than like splatting. Oh, yeah. And it's, like it's darkness. You don't know where you are. This is yeah. making me hyperventilate. No it, like, one it's will coming ever on. find you. Uh -uh. Yeah, we, we listen. Oh, well, maybe in like, you know, several uh, hundred years when they're trying to build a new super Walmart, they just find like a really young looking skeleton down there and they're like. 
scientific, Whoa. like, you know, just like breaks people's brains and we just have to like cover it up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Imagine that you're like the cause of like the next Illuminati, you know? Or Think about that. what will happen is like we've dug this up. Well, we're capitalists. Just like sweep it under the rug. Who cares? And let's hope it doesn't bring a kaiju. It doesn't bring an Ivan Ooze or just a curse in general. That's true, man. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of problems with uh, with both options. Uh-huh. But I think like the most disrespectful is you get teleported into the ground. <laughs> and hey, if you get teleported into the sky, you flap your wings hard enough. Maybe you'll find yeah. out I you can might fly. It, if you you know spread out and you got like your shirt, your really big shirt on, and you yeah. like try and like skydive. And if you have webbed arms. Oh, well, I feel like now we're we're getting into like the uh, it, we're we're adding extra layers of how you could survive. Oh, I didn't tell you I'm you're either Rocky and or Bullwinkle. Oh, OK. So I had to. OK, that's different. Yeah. Then in that case, yeah, uh, Rocky would be fine. Sky for sure. One hundred percent. Bullwinkle ground. Well, what if you're and Bullwink, like you're both? Oh, I'm t- fused together like some kind of horrible, like a, a te- the teleportation accent that I used mm-hmm. to travel mm-hmm. back in time also fused me together ground you got to bury that you okay. can't have that walking around no right. it's it's got to be it's got to be one and done you can't risk anyone finding it nicole would you like to be rocky and bullwinkle yeah hell yeah <laughs> i like to freak people out <laughs> are you guys like slightly attracted to rocky no he's got like emotionally uh yeah he's got like a very like confident demeanor uh he's very upbeat Oh, uh, cutie. You know, it seems like seems like you know you're going to be okay with mm-hmm. Rocky, you know? And then you're friends with Bullwinkle. Uh, very true. Yeah. Or are you the third wheel and Bullwinkle, like, hates you and then you lead to the breakup of a long-term friendship? Oh. Wow. No, they, yeah. they'll they'll withstand my bullshit. Oh, And then I he see. buries both of you deep in the ground. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <that means. laughs> Gosh, Rocky, I... You just spent too much time being with uh, your new pal here, and I just had to just had to wrap things up, you know? <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'll bury you nice and deep. It's a little bit little bit goofy. I can't really do... I, I haven't listened to uh, Bullwinkle's voice in a long time, so I don't know if I'm nailing it. You're not. Ah, oh, we'll, we'll tell you that. If you, I wouldn't <laughs> have said anything unless you had asked. <laughs> Fair. What's our next note? Nicole, you got any? The submarine is is really cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, the fish, little fish guy. Yeah, yeah. Like outside of plot and everything, like the submarine by itself is cool, and I like it. I also like the little eel friend. That's like kind of like an alligator. I think that thing is really cute. <laughs> and at one point, what's what's her name? The evil lady. Diva Tox. Diva Tox calls Rita and asks I I feel like this is my favorite part of the movie oh, honestly. Yeah. Oh, that's a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was her calling Rita to be like how how do I fucking get rid of these damn Power Rangers and Rita's like you don't. <laughs> you run. So, man, it's there's no there's no getting rid of them. And I wrote Zordon sounds like if Kermit was a robot. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I am teens. Why don't or I am Kermit the teens. Why don't you help me today? You must find Larry Goat. He is a That's wizard. Good. You're not Zordon the the Goopy guy. Goopy guy. Yeah, what's his name? What guy? But he's not Goopy anymore. Huh? You mean Lord Zed? Yeah, Lord Zed. Oh, wait. Lord, Lord Zed's just snoring. Yeah. Yeah. He's not saying anything. Maybe it was Zordon. It then. was Zordon. Okay. I remember you saying okay. that. Because I thought the same thing. <laughs> no, the goopy Yeah, I don't guy. know. Okay. The goopy guy who's no longer goopy? You mean Lord Zed? Yeah, him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love how he's trying to sleep. I do like the eye mask over yes. Lord Zed. Yeah. Is, is extremely good. I was going to comment on that too. Like they were, it felt like the actors who played those characters were like, hey, we, we've we done a lot for this franchise. You at least need to afford us a little bit of wiggle room. And I think like <laughs> someone who worked on Lord Zed or the actor himself was like, let's throw a, a, a like a sleep mask on. So it really also, <laughs> how do you know he's sleeping? He he doesn't have real eyes or eyelids. Yeah, we gotta that's throw why that it's cute. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I have like when they're talking, uh, when he like breaks his spine, 
and they're at the hospital, one of them goes, oh, no, the competition. And this is when we learn that it's the, uh, you know, to save the shelter. And I'm like, guys, this is not on you. You are teenagers. This is something that maybe as a community outreach, you can try to fundraise. But this shouldn't be solely on these five teens to make sure that this <laughs> this is the government's problem. Yeah, they're they're going to need a lot of therapy. Yeah. <laughs> For so much. It's true. Also, I wrote down Diva Talks. You don't need a male presenting demon to rule the universe. Yeah. Yeah, girl. You can slay, queen. And then we get to uh, Bulk and Skull. What are they up to? Well, it turns out Bulk and Skull are cops now. So yes. it's, uh, it's just like we always say, ACABs, all cops are Bulk and Skulls. Ooh. I like that. <laughs> it was a dumb joke. I wrote that down. And then I wrote in brackets next to it, maybe cut this one wrong. (laughs) (laughs) But you're like, wait, what podcast am I on today? Tokyo Lives. Oh, I'm on Mostly Speaking Sentai. Yeah. Listen, I wrote I wrote the notes the same way I write them for whenever I'm doing a Signals episode. (laughs) Well, you should have dumbed it down even more. I mean, yesterday I called Mothra a MILF. A moth I'd like to fuck, so... <laughs> hey, all right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You and a lot of the internet, frankly. <laughs> uh-huh. And now let's go into my note about Bulk and Skull. They are glizzards because okay. they do glizzy magic. Yeah. You see Bulk, no, not Bulk, Skull have oh. a hot dog. And yeah. in some shots... In a bun. In a bun. In some yeah. shots, there is the actual wiener, and in yes. some shots, there is no wiener. It's just the it's just the bun. Yeah. Uh huh. He's a glizzard. They didn't Harry. have the coverage. <laughs> they shot it. They shot it once without the hot because that's like the thing, right? The hot dog's gonna like attract flies if you shoot for too long, right? So you do a sh- you do a handful of takes to get like all the dialogue right, where he's just holding like maybe his hand or just holding the bread to get into the positioning, mm-hmm. and then you do a shot with like the hot dog, and he goes through and he says all the lines. Uh oh, he fucked up three of the lines. Uh, well, whatever. Let's just splice in whatever we've got. It doesn't matter. And, you know, <laughs> yeah i can see it i can see how it happened <laughs> i think wh- the hot dog fell out and no one noticed and he's just like hey hey and then once someone trips on the hot dog and they're like oh no but that was a really good take no one will notice this will just be on movies and we can pan and scan when it's on vhs oh yeah perfect that's true yeah <laughs> Someone give us a VHS copy and we'll figure out, was it pan and scanned to not show the glizzard? Yes. And then they're chased down by Diva Tox in the a UFO. Like, it, it's yes. made to seem like they're getting abducted because they actually do get abducted. And it's never explained why all of a sudden they are they think they're from different countries and why they have white hair. They get brainwashed uh, what, by Diva Tox's nephew. He's like, and I even scrambled their brains so that they'd be more subservient. Oh. And that makes them German? And Spanish. And Spanish. Yes. True. It's odd, but first, before yeah. they do that, they're they're on their motorcycle. You know, they have a little car next to it. You know, the, what do you call them? A little sidecar? Yeah, sidecar. Yeah. And they're bripping through trying to get away from this. And they run into <laughs> this, this bait shop called bait Norman shop. Bates Shop. Get it? Which, wh- why? Ah, uh, do you get it? Why not? Because kids won't understand the reference yeah. in detail. They'll just know that Norman Bates is a word. It's like freeform word association. And Saban doesn't care. <laughs> but there's no purpose for that besides to make the reference. It's not like, yeah. oh, we're going to then have it's- them see their mommy and it's actually not their mommy. There's no layering no. to this. It's just like, that's no. a thing. It's just free form word association. It's a bait shop. It's a Norman bait shop. Ha 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 ha. That's it. That is literally where the thought stopped. Or unless this is a real place. Oh, it could be. There could be a guy named Norman that runs a bait shop nearby, and they were like, let's just film here. Yeah. And they blew up his tiny little stinky bait shop. Or it is, like, maybe they filmed on the Universal lot. Hey, guys, we're guaranteed they did not. One, it's a 20th Century Fox, and two, you can't do non-union on these places, so... Oh yeah, I, I, it feel it could have been, like, a set that, like, anyone can film on, and it's just or, called the, What's Up? It's what Rob said, and it's just a dad joke. 
Okay. I feel like my guess might be the most accurate. Is someone just tried to make a free form word association joke? Yeah. And then they they left it in the script, and then the prop guys were like, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, does it smell like a campfire or does it smell yeah, it like, does, okay, baby. or do you think it smells like a wildfire? I'm asking if I should close the windows. Oh, yeah, you guys have been dealing with the smoke up there. It's probably the smoke if you want to close the windows, because otherwise- you can smell it ever so slightly, yeah, I would- Yeah. But someone could just be burning stuff nearby. <laughs> the house, yeah, House Norton here, you could be on fire. That That's another unfortunate possibility. Uh, it says it's fair. I don't want to hear it later if you're complaining about the smoke. I can vibe if you want to. If you want to go run, take a quick break and shut a window. I, well, you guys I, chat amongst yourselves. Keep going with notes, and I'm gonna shut these windows. So Tommy and the new Pink Ranger, whose name I don't remember, not Kimberly, have to go to uh, like Africa to go find the wizard because that's yes. where he landed. And they have a sequence <laughs> that confuses me so much. Okay. Which is the Pink Ranger's like, I'm so tired. Tom. And she's got like an Australian accent. I'm so tired, Tommy. I've been walking. Yeah, so that's Cockney. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, and so she's like, oh. And then a uh, boa constrictor is just like yes. hanging out there. And Tommy's like, don't move. Don't <laughs> worry. I'll save you. And so he reaches Shoves forward her, yes. to like get her out of the way mm -hmm. and instead of just pulling her he shoves her off of a cliff yes yes <laughs> and fully. Then, then grabs the snake and then starts wrapping it around himself yes just in the most insane rescue attempt ever like babe don't worry <laughs> grabs her tosses her and then <laughs> starts punching a snake it's farce it's so good what an excellent sequence <laughs> Oh, hey, guys, it, there's no, like, campfires or anything like that. It's not wildfires. There's just a birthday party happening next door. They got a big-ass oh. cake, so big the kid passed out trying to get out all the candles. Oh, yep, that would do it. Give me some that. So cake? now it's, well, now it's just burning. They had oh. to help the kid. Oh, no. And that's why it got so, really smoky. Ah, uh, okay. I thought it was, I thought it was the Canadian wildfire still, but no. I guess that, that makes more sense. Oh, you know? yeah. 100%. The, birth, the birthday cake makes more. That, that's logical. I can see, you know. So, yeah, that's uh, they do manage to find the wizard and save him, and that's cool. And I guess I guess that leads us to the, the reveal of the new powers because, yikes, Lair Gold's melting because of the sun. He's, he's dying, so they've got him, like, strapped up to a, a hilarious oxygen mask. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Rangers, you've got to go save the day. So here I've made new power suits for you. And they, we get the reveal of the four power cars, which is the funniest reveal ever because they go from like giant robot like dogs and like lizards and like now I don't know what Zio had. Zio had something, I assume. And then now it's like cars, just normal looking cars yeah. <laughs> with stuff glued onto them, you know? Yeah, like dad's van, dad's SUV, dad's Honda Civic, and dad's mm -hmm. other van. <laughs> no, Tanya, they're extraordinary cars. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yes. <laughs> I did have one note about the snake you guys were talking about. Yes. Oh, yeah? uh, the Australian lady, she goes, I've told you, Tommy, don't put your long, scaly penis on me in public. God damn it, James. It's called privates for a reason. I thought my Cockney accent was bad. You've got like a Beatles accent yeah, going on here. Yeah, you've got like New Zealand. Well, hey, <laughs> as long as it's something. <laughs> you know, hey, fair enough. I would have really liked it if when she like used her morpher in that setting and everyone like this should be a Sentai trope. They use the morphers and instead of like full body suits, it's bathing suits. And they're like, yeah, it's beach time. <laughs> oh, if they had situational morphing, that would oh, be fun. Oh, man. So you know? cool. That would be sick, for, actually. For different situations, they get different armors. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And then your beach episode is, yeah, they're all wearing swimsuits, but they still got the power helmet on. So, yeah. like, it's like the dudes in, like, swim trunks and, and, like, banana hammocks just, like, running. But they've still got these giant power helmets. Power helmets, Primo. but have a built-in snorkel. Snorkels. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. Excellent idea. I love where this is going. I liked, so when we see that Larry Goat has a child, I wrote down, they're an egg-laying species, Nicole. 
And uh, they that crystal wand, Diva Tox is probably going to shove that into Molagor's soft spot. <laughs> and he's just like, uh, that's how he gets no! off. He's made of magma. There will be a soft spot in there. And he just shoves it in. And he's like, oh. oh so going into his brain? Yeah. Like the, the soft, soft spot. spot on his skull. Yeah. Okay. I thought you meant like like you were trying to make a, a reference to a G spot. Nope. And I was like, I wouldn't call it the soft spot, but okay. Some and people then call like it. stabbing, they made the motion into stabbing into your brain. And so I was like, hold on now. We've got <laughs> different fetishes evolving here. So you're talking about like brain play, which uh-huh. is its own thing. Yeah. I think they do it in uh, the Oblongs. Oh, no, they do it in uh, Duncanville. Duncan <laughs> Duncan's uh, soft spot didn't fill in properly. So he's like, yeah, it's like when I touch my soft spot. And he's like, Ugh. and then his like sisters start poking at it. And the mom's like, quit touching your brother's soft spot. <laughs> Jesus. It's crazy how that show didn't get a fourth season. It's a good show. Yeah. What a shame. When the Larry Goat family is on screen, I wrote, why why does this fucker fill me with rage? <laughs> it's, it's a pretty awful thing to look at for a long period of time. I don't want to be involved with whatever is happening with it. And yet it's just there and it's gargling at you. Like yeah. they don't speak. They just, and they, I guess they thought that was like cute or fun. It's, that's what it is. Wretched. Yeah. It's awful. It's Ugh. that I know that the producers were like, yeah, this thing is fucking <laughs> adorable. Ugh. People are going <laughs> to love gonna it. Kids are going to love this. Yeah. And that's kids what are makes it worse. running out of the theater, screaming, covering their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, I was like, when does this dude talk and he just never does? That's baffling. They should have given him a voice like this. No, I hate that as well. Hello, Rangers. It's me, Larry Goat. I'm a wizard. I and I'm his sultry wife. I wish I could make you a mint julep, but currently I'm tied up by diva talks. And then the baby goes, <laughs> yeah, guys, you know, I'm a little scrappy boy. He's got a, yeah, he's got a cigar. <laughs> Give the baby a cigar, you know, uh-huh. like a classic Looney Tunes thing, you know. Uh, Nicole, you, uh, if Rob's the father, I'm the mother, you be the, the child. Okay. Give us a voice. So wait, I'm the mother or wait. No, I'm on. the mother. You're the father. You're the, I'm the father. Yeah. And okay. Nicole's not the mama. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, uh, Larry, go, please save us. Uh, uh, your son wants to say something to you. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Worry not, child. I'll be there to save you as soon as my intestines stop falling out of my butthole. You must be under one of them yellow suns, because that's what happens to all our species. Our butthole stuff falling out when we get underneath the yellows. Oh, no. Am I going to? <laughs> oh, no. I get, I wish we had your father's crystal wand. We could shove it in your soft spot. That's the only thing that would, that's the only thing that r- retracts the sphincter. <laughs> Just... Just a wretched, just fire, fire, just cancel the cast at this point. Just, it's over. They, all the rangers pull out their blasters and like cock the hammer and we like, can't, we can't live like, and Tommy pulls out a normal human revolver. It's like, we can't, we can't do this one, gang. Wait, do they kill the, 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 the creatures yes. or themselves? Yeah, the <laughs> creatures. They just kill the family. Cartel style. It's just like, and Diva Tox is just like, oh. <laughs> Screaming, <laughs> and Tommy's like, "And you're not going to talk about this." Me and my mafia friends are making sure of that. And then the, the Sopranos are there smoking cigars. Uh-huh. See, I brought it back Whoa. to the joke we made at the very beginning. Like, yes. And then I'm still not dead. <laughs> and they're like, dish, dish, dish. Oh. <laughs> they're mixing up concrete, <laughs> throw them overboard. We got to teleport these two into dirt. <laughs> we'll eat the kid though. <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't know. We'll make a veal of it. Are you telling me that you wouldn't want to taste truly one of a kind flesh? No. You know, like you're the only person that will ever eat this hamburger. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that a reward in of itself? Yeah, no, Nicole. Dude. Reward yourself. You work so hard. Think about that. Dude, I legit had like chicken deli slice on a sandwich for the first time in like 15 years and I was like this is 
fucking disgusting. Whoa. Totally fair. You know what? I support your lifestyle choices. However, James and I will eat that baby. <laughs> hey, maybe you didn't get it from that, the correct deli. I Maybe, man. I don't know. I'm like, how do people like talk so much shit about like vegan food, but this tastes fucking gross. Here's the thing. A lot of like non-vegan food relies entirely on fat for flavor, like that fat and acid, obviously. But like vegans have to know how to season shit, mm -hmm. like inherently so modern obviously i think a lot of like critiques of vegan food come from like early 2000s vegan food where it was just like just tofu and yeah. like salt super limited flavor palette right mm. but like since then we've realized that there's like whole cultures that do vegan and vegan adjacent foods it's like why don't we just take like indian flavors and like hispanic flavors and spanish flavors and mix these in with and it's like oh right we can make like some of the most kick-ass food you've ever had without using meat so yeah Sorry, that's a side note. Uh, unlike the the thing we're really talking about, which is eating this baby. Oh, right? yeah. so good. I would not do it. Well, okay. When they change for the first time, they're all like sitting around that circle. <laughs> they look up and they're like, ah, I wrote down, why Zordon? Why does this morph hurt and the others <laughs> didn't? <laughs> Zordon, please. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's wrong? Oh my God. Did we mess something up? Did you? Did I put? I know I gained a little weight. Is that why? <laughs> Resort really should have given them like a heads up. Like this one's going to suck, Rangers. Uh huh. Sorry. Every time. It's like anamorphs. <laughs> 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 Because <laughs> in the book, it describes it as being elongated and painful. Yes. That's true. Ugh. Honestly, like if I was those kids, I would just like never morph after the. I like I'm not part of this war. Sorry, conscientious objector, <laughs> or just kill me. Honestly, at this point, <laughs> or why some not? Some of the things that happen to those kids suck way worse than just getting killed instantly by one of those aliens by a flashlight, or just turn into a cat and live like that forever. Hell yeah. Well. And then your brain starts to go, and then you go crazy. Yeah, no, like the then one kid who gets turned into a hawk. Yeah, then you're just a no. You're just a cat. Cool. Yeah, you're just a fucking cat, man. <laughs> humping other cats. <laughs> oh, I see. Hey, speaking of humping other cats, do you guys want to talk about the stay gorillas on the haunted pirate ship? Those gorillas. I, stay gorillas. The stegosaurus oh, gorillas. Okay, are we at that point yet? Let me just check I mean, my they, notes. Probably. They do their first transformation and then they're like, get in our cars, let's go. And then they drive to like the docks. Oh, yes. And yeah, because so my mine is idiot dropped key. So, yeah, we're there. OK, so then all of a sudden the this blue car pulls up and they're like, yes. whoa, is that Rocky? And then he comes Rocky. out and then all of a sudden he's like, hey, guys, it's me, Justin. And there is not. It, we never established that Zordon, we should have seen Zordon and Alpha just flipping through a catalog of local <laughs> teens and being like, who will we get? Or, hey, my name's Kermit the Frog, who do we get? Ay ay ay, Zordon, I'll find one, don't worry, what about them? Oh no, that one's mean to me. And then like <laughs> they just keep flipping and they're like, I guess we can only find this tween. <laughs> like, or, or like, hey, I guess maybe Rocky said, hey, this kid knows we need to like either kill him or bring him aboard. <laughs> yeah. Like have a sequence where like afterwards, like you have like where he's getting ADR because they had him in an actual neck brace and the actor couldn't say words very uh. well. So they had to ADR him afterwards. So it's really, really funny and obvious. But so you just have him like, you know, like uh, uh, alpha, I got to talk to you about something. Get get here with the revolver. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, 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 I can't do it. <laughs> Alpha, no, I didn't mean you. I meant like your mafia friends. Uh, oh. <laughs> then just suffocate me with your fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Oh dude. my God. <laughs> Alpha has a million dollar baby Rocky. Oh man, I'd Jesus. love to just smell that ass. <laughs> It smelled like Radio Shack in the 90s, <laughs> but mixed with a little bit of sex. What the fuck? Because I'd be coming on that butt a lot. I don't think Alpha has sex. I think Alpha's asexual. I bet he's ace. No, Alpha's into hand jobs. Oh, no, he's an incel is what he is. No, Alpha's a pleaser. 
Alpha says, really? oh, I, I, I don't care about coming. All I care <laughs> is if you have a good time. Okay, yeah, you know what? I can see that. Yeah. It seems like, they, okay. It seems like it. A child shows up unannounced in a car that they didn't introduce earlier. Yeah. And they don't, like, I guess they just, like, tie, like, Alpha got in there and tied, like, some books to the pedals for him. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> So he's, he's like, Alpha tra- gave me a crash course on how to drive. It's like this eight-year-old kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is driving. So he shows up, and they're like, cool, get on the spooky ship with us. I guess we'll talk about this more later. And then they don't. But he's, like, sitting out there, and he's all sad. He's like, and then they announce the, like, oh, yeah, it's a shame my dad's missing, and also that my orphanage is going to get shut down because mm-hmm. you guys could do that karate show. Yeah. And there are these horrible pulsating sacks <sighs> on the outside of the ghost ship, which on the external shots, whenever they show the stock footage, it's just like a nice clean boat. And then when you cut in close, it's like this damp, dreary skeleton and cobweb covered <laughs> yeah. like pirate ghost pirate ship. Mm-hmm. And then the little things hatch and they explode open to give us the the only cool fight scene in the entire show, uh, entire movie where the Rangers untransformed have to fight. Uh, what I called stegorillas, which are stegosaurus gorillas. They have like the little plated backs. They got the long like head, but then they've got these gorilla bodies, you know? Oh, yeah. They had like cuttlefish like in Guar. They're, that's what their necks oh, looked like. Cuddle, yeah, okay. I guess, uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking dinosaurs exclusively, but that's true. They do have a little bit of a cuttlefish look. Cuttlesaurus. I almost said it. But <laughs> specifically the Guar one. It's his penis. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know Guar very well. <laughs> oh, we that was the previous episode we discussed a Guar movie. Fair. I really like these. They gave off like mama those dudes from oh, Ninja Turtles yes. too. Yeah, but they're fun. Really, really fun suits, and it's like it's a shame that those monsters don't get used ever again elsewhere. Oh yeah, I thought the like look of them was just like ah, oh, that's such a fun, gross little guy. And Tommy defeats the last one by doing cool karate chops <laughs> really, really fast and then going, boo. And then the last one goes, nope, not for me, man. And he just walks overboard. Mm-hmm. The end. <laughs> He's a little cutie. <laughs> that whole fight scene would be a hell of a lot cooler if it wasn't like that the, the, the staff just flooded the soundstage with fog. Like, it is so hard to see. And I'm watching, a like a rip of an old DVD. So like, it's just even worse. Mm. You know, you don't watch this on Hulu. No, I guess. Is it on Hulu? Yeah. Oh my God. Well, I didn't think about that. I just found it online. Guys, <laughs> you gotta at least go to justwatch.com, Search the title and see where it's at. See, I probably should have done that. I just usually start by Google searching the name of the movie and scrolling past where it's paid for until I find a free, horribly ripped version on YouTube or Daily Daily Motion. Or on archive.org. That's a resource oh, everyone yeah. should be using more. It's true. I talk about it all the time. I actually did like a donation drive for it. I have two more special episodes to record for people who donated to it. Hell yeah. There was one thing that we missed, which is we see Diva Talks for a short little bit and she's looking in the mirror and she's like, oh, mirror, do I look fat? And then it like cur- like turns to us seeing like the mirror image of her and the mirror image just goes, nah, <laughs> it was very good. Like she's Excellent. awesome. Just fantastic. It's a shame she's yeah. not the main antagonist of like the actual show. Yeah, she is. She is? Yes. I thought it was I like looking at the wiki, it's like some other dude. Sorry, when you're looking at the wiki, it's like the machine empire shows up and it's King Mondo and Queen McKenna. And I was like, don't come Wait, on, get this out of here. I th- you're you mean by Diva Tox. No, you're looking at Zio. Am I looking at Zio? Oh yeah, my god. That is the, uh, Jesus Christ. Stop <laughs> looking at the computer. I just want to look at I just want to look at, at Zio so much instead <laughs> of this. Stop it. I'm trying to get away from Turbo as fast as possible. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Let me look at so when they finally go to whatever that triangle thing is, they're like, it's the triangle. Yeah. And I'm like, no, guys, that's the grand line, baby. <laughs> yeah, they have to hold their morphers together get electrocuted in pain as they <laughs> as like this invisible cgi wave kind of washes past them otherwise they'll die 
in the Bermuda Triangle? Yeah, I, I don't guess? know. Yeah. Oh, the Nemesis Triangle is what they call it. Oh, okay. They and then they drive a van onto the the shoreline. Meanwhile, Jason and Kimberly are staged get kidnapped. By the way, I forgot oh, to yeah. mention that the old pink and the old red ranger get kidnapped because they have pure hearts, and so they'll be the sacrifices to the evil guy. Mm-hmm. So they're like in a little prison cell, and their their idea is like let's just like break open this hatch. And like swim out. We don't know how deep underneath water we are, but like they're expert divers now, I guess. So they they crack it open. They get flooded out. They take Bulk and Skull with them and they swim to the island of racist caricatures. That's uh-huh. right. Some classic Ooga Booga Islanders. Wowie Zowie. Also, the thing with Bulk and Skull, they waited until it was fully up then they got Bulk and Skull from a different prison cell. Why not bring them with you? Maybe help you take all the door down, and then you would have been fine. And then Nicole <laughs> said there was, like, an ass shot that was egregious when they were on the, on the, the shore. Really? Yeah. I didn't see. Yeah, what, t- t- time stamp? What, 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 what were the time codes <laughs> for on, that, I gotta, Nicole? I gotta look at that uh, again. Just watch that. Very- hold, hold on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> enhance. Well, wait. Uh, also, which ass? Like, you know, that's very important. You got a... a, a a three and four chance of it being a good ass shot. You oh, know? it's Alphas. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Alpha shows up. No, it's uh, the old what's her pink, name? Kimberly? aka Kimberly. Yeah, I, I assumed it was probably going to be that, but because it was like framed like she was laying down, mm. like on her stomach, and it was framed like only her ass was here, and then the the. <laughs> people like rushing back. down the beach okay <laughs> awesome well but you described her as the old pink and that's how i describe my ex-wife <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> but yeah that's uh, uh my notes get super sparse here which is same. same they get onto the island jason and kimberly get kidnapped by the uh the cult of the Malagor worshippers, they get brainwashed uh, and turned evil. The Power Rangers then come and try to save them. Okay, but before that... Oh, yeah. They send Vash the Stampede out. Yes. And he's like, guys, there's something wrong with my Tiger Electronics Batman and Robin game. Because that's what it looks like he has. Yeah. It's just uh, like yeah. a basic-ass electronic video game and he's like oh where where, where are we going I mean, folks it probably it probably is <laughs> yeah it's probably a power rangers one that's very likely yeah <laughs> that tiger electronics batman and robin i sunk so many hours into that it's so good <laughs> my note for this is hearing a child's voice come out of an adult body is wild <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah when he transforms it's yeah. very funny what about this? This is kind of a kid's voice. Maybe no, it's like it's a not. mischievous, like a uh, wizard, like a, yeah, like a, damn it. Like a con man. That still, that still sounds like an adult, you know? <laughs> like that was more of a Larry goat voice. <laughs> that, I don't know what that is. I'm a baby now. That's no. like a squeak. Yeah. I guess I could kind of see that. <laughs> A little bit unsettling, you know, not as unsettling as a practiced child. You know? All right, here's a perfect child's voice. Have you voice. ever met a baby? Yes, <laughs> I'm about to do a perfect child's voice. All right. Hey, I'm walking here. That's it. Wow. Uh-huh, that's a New York kid. No, you did it wrong. What? It's I'm baby here. No, that's a baby. <laughs> I'm baby in here. I'm crawling here. Hey, I'm baby here. Pro- that's one of my most yeah. popular TikToks is <laughs> me saying, I was so stoned. Everyone find it on TikTok. I just got out of the shower and I said, this is what happens if you bump into a baby in New York City. Then it goes to me truly out of the shower, just with my hair down, so stoned. And I go, hey, I'm baby here. And it got so many views and Nicole was upset by that. Is this, wait, is this a real TikTok or is this like, Uh okay, I thought you were doing an elaborate bit. (laughs) Uh Uh-uh. No, this was true. (laughs) Because I was in the shower just saying, hey, I'm 
baby I'm making myself laugh and then it was like i gotta yeah, film until this. i was annoyed <laughs> and then every it was so much so that in the next episode if you're listening to this in the podcast feed it's already out on this existed i said because in warriors of virtue there's a part where one of the kids says hey we're walking here and i brought that up and then lil Corey and shell we both go Hey, a baby here. <laughs> and I was like, hey, wait, no, that's me. And they're like, yeah, dude, that's so funny. God damn it. It's so good. <laughs> I think I have like four more notes. I don't know. Like they start chanting Largo, Largo. And I guess they really want to see Paul F. Tompkins tonight. <laughs> Why are evil Kim and Jason Lyons? Because they start going. Rah, rah. Yeah, they I guess it's because that's how evil they are. <laughs> I love when it's Jason, evil Jason has Tommy and Diva Tox is like, feed him to the volcano. And he says, no, this one's mine. <laughs> it's OK. So, yeah, I mean, the, the fight scene between the brainwashed Tommy and Jason or sorry, Tommy or Jason and Kimberly and then the rest of the Power Rangers feels like it probably should have been like a bigger deal. But it's like, eh. Especially because at least one of them should still have like some morphing powers, I think. Because like I think Jason was still the Gold Ranger at the end of the last one. So, Probably. but he's I don't know. They just that's whatever. It's just he's just punching. But they do manage to summon Malagor, and it is a dude in a gray morph suit with like plastic rocks <laughs> kind of glued onto it. I with think some red cracky lines underneath. I think the the rip that you watched is not giving it the full beauty of this this entire man. Yeah, I, I think man. you watched a children's play recreation of it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cuz okay. he's good. Uh is he? Yes. He's like a lava fish man. Are you looking you know? at Zio again? I think no, you're looking I at promise, Zio again. I promise I'm looking at <laughs> the Malagor. He's good, but this, I think in the last movie, the Zord fight was all CG and it sucked because of oh, it. Truly terrible. This one sucked because it was all just close up shots of a single <laughs> one. And then in yes. the end, like you get one sl sword slice and then it's done and then they win the competition. But like, yeah, the Zord fight wasn't that good. And this movie sucks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. The big climactic super fight is like maybe four minutes long and it feels super underwhelming, especially mm -hmm. compared to I think some of it's like the sound stage looks super vacant, you know, like it's just like three palm trees and then like a fake mm -hmm. mountain. Yeah. And so it feels so sparse compared to even like the normal kind of Megazord fights that we see where there's like at least like the camera angle is not like down looking up at them the yeah. whole time it's like up looking down so you get like the full look of the monster you get the full look of the megazord and you see like all these trees and stuff around them as they're like punching each other i think it was also because they had a lot of like mountains in the foreground to probably hide the fact that there's nothing else <laughs> yes yeah it's a bummer. It's a bummer that this is supposed to be like the big like, all right, new show. We've mm -hmm. got our, our heroes coming together. They've got their new robots. And they're going to fight this uh, this guy. I did read that there is a comp like a very different version of this movie that might have been better. But really, I think anything that was cut is just gone forever. I'm not sure. But yeah, I this one sucks. Nicole, what's your thought? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All there right. You go. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you, Rob, for hopping on today. Hell yeah. yeah. It's definitely, you know what? Go check out the reboot Power Ranger movie or honestly, the, the first Power Rangers movie mm -hmm. or honestly, any of the shows. Yeah. Just skip the movie. It doesn't set up any lore that you can't establish in the first two episodes of the actual show i'm guessing yeah and the big final fight is not really worth it and the only thing that's funny bad is the like fight sequence on the boat and i guess watching rocky break his neck uh by trying to do a cool flip kick and all the diva talk scenes check those and out all the diva, <laughs> diva talks 10 on 10 yeah. obviously and jason pushing kimberly off a cliff that's wild oh yeah that's fun mm -hmm. wait that happens 
Yeah, yeah. the snake he, scene. He throws her out of the way. Oh, or, no, that no, was Tommy Jason. and Cat. Tommy, Tommy and Cat, throws sorry. New Pink Ranger. He's like, get out of here. New Pink sounds like my current love. Hmm. Well, anyway, folks, it's been uh, a lovely <laughs> Damn. He, he heard that and he's like, oh, I he's got He's playing it. us out. The the like giant coat hanger just starts slowly like coming out towards you, James. Just All like, right. I thought the dog was excited, so excited. Oh, he's like, "Oh, I'm, sorry, you could hear red in the background." Yeah, that's what we were sorry. commenting on. He's so oh, no, excited. That's he's him scratching up. himself. Sorry. No, he was licking himself. I've got a Jimmy. no. He, this is the old man. He's joined me. You can kind of see him. Yeah, a little bit. We could see him. puppy. Guys, we need to start doing oh, plugs. Puppy. All right, Rob, what yeah. do you have to plug? We have another show to do, Nicole. Yes, check out Tokyo Lives or the spinoff Tokyo Signals. They're both on the same RSS feed. Uh, we talk about giant monsters and I talk about TV shows that are eh, it's kaiju related. Recently, we put out, or actually coming up on July 4th, we'll be releasing an episode we just recorded talking about uh, the Skull Island anime. That show on Netflix just came out. So it was pretty fun. Uh, living on Island Time. And you're on Twitch. That's right. Marissa, Kyle's wife, has been playing through Final Fantasy 16. Uh, I haven't jumped in on those streams <laughs> just because uh, Final Fantasy 16. Sorry, not just six. So check those out as well. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I don't have like a, any like anything current to advertise outside of those two. <laughs> All right, Nicole, what you got to plug? Follow Darling Homebody on social medias and visit my website, darlinghomebody.com, for cool shit. Hey, guys, Woo. head over to mlmpod.com to find out information about my other podcast. And, hey, listen to my music under Marshland Monster. Lots of good stuff with Dragon Boy Suede. He was the friend of ours that was on Scare Tactics, Howard Kramer. Or maybe we said that. I don't know. <sighs> <sighs> it's smoky outside. I got to take b deeper breaths and head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. It's going to be a good time over there. And if you're a monthly or no, not that if you're a $10 patron, you get monthly exclusive content on top of that weekly in the form of straight to Patreon. Last month, we put out Uncle Sam, the 1996 slasher movie, a watch along with little Corey and I super fun. Fun, super funny. Corey and I barely watched the movie, I think. But it's a great movie. Everyone should check it out. It's on like Shudder, Tubi, Amazon Prime. It's fantastic. And the live stream. Watch it on the 4th of July because that's when the movie takes place. It's very hey. fun. And you also get shout outs on every single free feed podcast when you're a $10 patron of patreon.com forward slash MLM pod. So let's begin with those starting with Steve F, Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, the Waz, Orion, Jordan B, the Chaos Witch, my big old brother in common law, Joshua, Jake, Steve Barnes, a sweet child of time and intro void wherever music is found. The womb in which I emerged, my mother, Lil Corey's BFF and former roommate. Shane that fed twitch.tv forward slash core winning and he's gonna be on the stream in just a little bit it's Corwin and from the rom complex formulaic a podcast and script writing and twitch.tv forward slash r2 shelby 2 it's r2 shelby 2 I've been James I'm Nicole and I'm Rob and we've been a mostly speaking sentai bye bye Peace. bye by the way, Formula is awesome. Oh, so good. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. This has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit MLMPod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to Patreon.com forward slash MLMPod and sign up today. Oh, yeah.